Good afternoon, Mr. Chancellor, Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, and justly proud graduates. Mr. John Bueller, would you please rise, sir? I said, would you please? Oh, you are standing. I'm sorry. <laughs> As a boy growing up in Morden, Manitoba, John Bueller would often walk to a nearby farm to admire the equipment, and this ignited his lifelong dream. He loved tractors, and he knew he wanted to build them. His passion for farm equipment never waned. In 1969, he purchased modern standard gas engine works. He, re he renamed it Farm King Limited, in 1981, he purchased the company's Winnipeg factory. He made a series of other acquisitions and amalgamated the companies to form Bueller Industries in 1944. Years passed, and he won awards such as the Manitoba Entrepreneur of the Year Award in 97, but it wasn't until 2000 that Mr. Bueller realized his boyhood dream of making tractors. He bought the last remaining tractor manufacturing facility of Canada, renaming it Bueller Versatile. His success in business achieved not with formal training, but with unwavering determination, vision, and acumen, as enabled him to give generously to Manitoba communities. Today, he and his wife, Bonnie, remain passionate philanthropists. His success, uh, John and, and, and Bonnie have touched many lives through their charitable offerings to numerous organizations. They've given to museums such as the Canadian Museum for Human Rights and the Manitoba Children's Museum, Seven Oaks Hospital, uh, Saint Amand uh, Center, Saint Boniface uh, Hospital and Research Foundation, the Misericordia Hospital Eye Care Center, and the Health Services Center, which named a research facility after him. They have also given to, uh, to the town of Morden, Winnipeg Parks, the Manitoba Chamber Orchestra and Schools. In short, John and Bonnie's vision and generosity of nurtured growth, health, and prosperity in Manitoba communities. In 1998, Mr. Bueller was named Morden Citizen of the Year. And in 2002, he received the Queen's Jubilee Medal for his community service. Five years later, he and Bonnie received the Variety Club Gold Heart Humanitarian of the Year Award. And in 2010, he was inducted into the Manufacturer's Hall of Fame. Well, Johnny, you know, there's, there's so many things in here that uh, I think uh, when you walk into a room, your wife and children are going to have to stand and applause, you know. As a true visionary, Mr. Bueller has shared his wisdom with many organizations sitting on the boards of Agricultural Manufacturers of Canada and the Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra. He has volunteered for groups such as Friends of Upper Fort Garry and the Manitoba Chamber Orchestra. And he and his wife, Bonnie, have been deeply involved in the trend-setting Bueller Gallery at St. Boniface Hospital the only public art gallery in a Canadian hospital presenting rotating exhibitions uh, by major Canadian artists. <clears throat> With the full support of the Buellers, the gallery has provided more than 60,000 hospital visitors a place to find inspiration and solace. At age 77, now retired as CEO of Bueller Industries, the indefatigable Mr. Bueller continues to make positive impacts on the community. Johnny, I am so proud to be your friend and to be able to participate in this ceremony. I know you to be a humble man and to be somewhat embarrassed by all this fuss over you. But as I said to you before, this is not only about you, but applauds the entire Mennonite community of Manitoba, which you so ably represent. Mr. Chancellor, oh, sorry. Uh, I've got this somewhere here. It is an honor for me to ask, on behalf of the Senate of the University of Manitoba, that you confer upon Mr. John Bueller the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. By virtue of the authority vested in me as Chancellor of this university, 
I admit you to the degree Doctor of Laws honoris causa with all the rights and privileges thereto appertaining. Congratulations, Dr. Bueller. I love this university. <laughs> I love university students, Gra especially graduates. My, I'm so jealous. 25 years ago, I frequently spoke to the School of Business here, and I've made many lifelong friends. In my 12th year at school, I was in grade nine, <laughs> I, I told my younger brother that uh, I was going to have 100 employees someday. And he was about, he's my younger brother, and he was about to graduate the next year. I figured if I had 100 employees and if I paid them $1,000 a year, that was big pay back then, I would keep 10% and my take would be $10,000 and I would be a rich man. My brother said, you're dreaming, Johnny. Why don't you try and pass grade nine? <laughs> I knew what I wanted. I knew my limitations. I was not a scholar. I only had some common sense. I am a dreamer, and from these dreams, I set what to others seemed like an impossible goal. I was a young man, and I said, I want to build a tractor. I started out with a small dealership in Morden selling Ramblers. I don't know if any of you even know that's a car. And, and uh, they, they haven't been around for a long time, but I sold a lot of them, and I loved Ramblers. After 10 years, I had enough money to buy my father-in-law's factory. By this time, I had learned how to borrow money. They don't teach that in university. <laughs> One of my goals was always to borrow as much money as possible. I like debt. <laughs> you don't have to worry about it. The bankers do that for you. And the bigger your debt, the more senior bankers you have worrying on your behalf. I took that course, and a good friend of mine, Norm Fisk, a chartered accountant, said to me, Johnny, you're going to be a millionaire, and that was music to my ears, and this is how you're going to do it. You're going to have $11 million worth of assets. You're going to have $10 million worth of debt. That leaves a million and makes you a millionaire. <laughs> he says, just don't sell your assets at a 10% discount or you're broke. <laughs> I never forgot that. Then one of my goals was to owe the bank $100 million. I never quite made it, but I came very, very close. My dream of building a tractor, as I said previously, came true in the year 2000. We sold tractors around the world, and we bought, when we bought 200 acres of land in Russia, not far from my, where my parents were born, um, the Russians took notice. And we got a visit from the Russians one day, three young men that had graduated just after perestroika. And they wanted to buy our factory, and I said, no, it's not for sale. Whatever makes you think it would be for sale? And they said, well, you're 70-some years old. You should think about it. I had never thought about it. 
They told us about their operation, so Bonnie and I decided we better go to Russia and check them out. We toured their factory. They have 13,000 employees, and indeed, they did need a tractor, and they would not settle for second best. They wanted the best tractor in the world, which was our tractor, of course. So I was almost 75 years old, and, and uh, I was feeling a little worn out, traveling and all, and they said, Again, will you sell us your company? And I said, no, it's not for sale. And they says, well, we'll give you $190 million. I gave them a feeble response, okay. <laughs> now, the Russians have my factories, but I've got their money. Then Bonnie and I set out on a new career of philanthropy. We'd done some of it before. Um, I'm not, my time's up. <laughs> what would you do with $190 million? Bonnie and I only did what had to be done. I'm so humbled by this experience here today and frightened to read in today's paper. Oh, I was going to leave that out, but I may as well say it now in a way. This was in today's paper. It said, uh, it said the students will follow my example. And, and that kind of scared me. So if you plan on following my example, please talk to me first. <laughs> I, I, I disagreed with one of the comments in today's paper. They say there's a risk to being a leader. And there is no risk to being a leader. If you're a leader, it's fun and there's absolutely no risk but I do agree that the reward is great. Yesterday I asked Bonnie, would you ever in your wildest dreams have imagined that I would be dressed like this and receiving this de honorary degrees? And her quick, usual response was, whatever makes you think you are in my wildest dreams. <laughs> That's my wife, she's supposed to be my best friend. <laughs> I would like to thank the university for giving me this great honor and my children for allowing Bonnie and I to give away their inheritance. <laughs> 30 years ago, Bonnie Chokes me up every time I think about it, but Bonnie gave me this card. It was written by Amanda Bradley, and this has been my prayer for all of these years. And I'll just read it quickly. I know my time is up. The title is, Lord, <clears throat> excuse me, Lord, let me be a dreamer. Lord, let me be a dreamer and let me be a doer. Let me strive and ch steadily achieve. Let me be a learner, let me be a teacher, let me give and graciously receive. Let me be your follower, let me be your friend. Let me hear your voice and heed your call. Let me come to know the special plans you have for me and let me with your help fulfill them all. Thank you again. <laughs> 